evening everyone and welcome back to some sporting memories quiz and tonight's the answers of course so this is the more exciting bit isn't it so i hope you enjoyed the questions last evening i'm sure you've been trawling around on google or youtube probably watching some of them some real classics here um, what i'm going to do is uh, run through the questions quickly i'll give you the answer and then hopefully we can uh, chat a little bit about the answer as well where we can so number one was the boxing film raging bull and we asked you which actor was told he could have been a professional boxer and the answer to this one was yep robert de niro robert de niro in the 1980 film um, he's portraying the boxer jake lamotta and he was an italian american um, so de niro fits that bill well he was a middleweight champion and he had quite a an aggressive bullish way in the ring um, he wasn't the hardest of punchers but he really could pound someone in the ring and he got this term raging bull for the way he behaved the way he was um, he went on to be 95 years of age interestingly died a few years ago now um, so yeah number one Robert De Niro. Well done if you got that right. <clears throat> Number two. Football now. In the film The Damned United, uh, actor Michael Sheen plays Brian Clough in his short 44-day reign at which football club? And of course, the answer to this one we're looking for was, that's right, Leeds United in 1974. So, if we go back in time, he had the, the great success... Um, at Derby with Peter Taylor of course and then they briefly touched on to Brighton before Brian decided to head off to Leeds and it didn't really work the way he wanted Don Reavy had left uh, the film probably not 100% accurate but he didn't have a great time at Leeds he had some brilliant players still to work with so he left Leeds after 44 days ended up at Nottingham Forest um, from 75 to 93 and of course two European Cups some phenomenal sides and his name forever um, immortalized really isn't it people often say Brian Clough the best manager um, that England uh, didn't have we well, should have been England manager so that's the damage United if you haven't watched it Definitely encourage you to watch it. Some excellent acting, acting by uh, Michael Sheen as Brian Clough. He's really got the uh, the mannerisms and the voice as well. So that's number two. Number three, uh, cycling now. Which cyclist is depicted in the film Flying Scotsman? And we were looking for the cyclist Graham Obrey. Did you get that? Graham Obrey. He was nicknamed Flying Scotsman. Um... Bit about Graham he twice broke the world hour record in 93 and 1994 he was the individual pursuit champion in 93 and 99 he was known for that quite unusual riding position wasn't he um, on his bike old faithful which the film does portray that he did use some parts of the washing machine to put it together um, it also in the film included his long ongoing battle with mental health problems um, he had bipolar disorder and he did try to commit suicide on a number of occasions but graham has been quite open about that over the years and has been a real good advocate um, for mental um, health conditions so that's number three uh, the answer graham obrey okay so number four <clears throat> is the film rush Form formula one film Rush was a film telling the story of the rivalry between which two Formula One stars? And we were looking for James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. That's correct. So well done if you got those. James Hunt, of course, Formula One champion in 1976. And Nicky Lauda winning in 75, 77 and in 1984 he won it. And interestingly, in 1984... Nicky won the Formula 1 Championship by just half a point. Interesting. And some of that was filmed at Cadwell Park, of course. So, number four was Nicky Lauder and James Hunt. 
Number five, this is a much more recent film. In the film Race, we see four, the four gold medals won by Jesse Owens at the 36 Games, but which American athlete went on to emulate this achievement in the Los Angeles 84 Games? And we were looking for Carl Lewis, the American athlete, um, who at uh, Los Angeles 84 would have been 23 years, a, 23 years of age, and he took gold in the 100, the 200, the 4x100 relay, and of course his most famous event, the long jump. So he matched Jesse Owens. Now Lewis went on to long jump to a numerous games. He went back in 88 to the Seoul Olympics, struck gold in the long jump. He went back in 92 to Barcelona, uh, got gold in the long jump and the relay. And at Atlanta in 96, gold again in the long jump at 35 years of age so incredible career really an amazing athlete so that was Carl Lewis for question number five yeah question number six Chariots of Fire that successful British film depicting Abrahams and Eric Little uh, Abrahams won the uh, gold in the 100 who was the next British athlete to achieve this same feat who was the next British athlete so we were looking for, it's quite a long wait after the Olympic Games in 1924, but it was 1980, the Moscow Olympics. And who was the runner? It was the Scottish um, sprinter, Alan Wells. So well done if you got that. So 1980 Moscow Games and the sprinter was Alan Wells. And he won it by very slender margin, didn't he? But um, I think he remains the Scottish 100 metres uh, record holder as well. So that's number six. Number seven, what was the name of the Manchester City goalkeeper who was a former prisoner of war and depicted in the film The Keeper? I think it only came out a couple of years ago, didn't it, The Keeper? Maybe last year, actually. And the name of the keeper was Bert Troutman. Bert Troutman. Um, he passed away in 2013, aged 89. He played at Manchester City from 1949 to 1964, making a whopping 508 appearances. Um, in the 55-1956 season, he was in the FA Cup final with Manchester City against Birmingham, and he endured a really nasty break to one of his vertebrae. But the story is, which did happen, he carried on playing in absolute agony. Because in those days, no substitutes. They would have lost the keeper. They may have lost the game. They were 3-1 up. Uh, but Bert went on to play. And, and after the game, he even went up to get his winner's medal. He collapsed in pain, ended up in the hospital, and the x-ray showed a number of vertebrae had been affected. And, uh, and he was quite fortunate that it didn't do him severe damage. So he recovered from that, of course. So that's number seven. Number eight, football one. Escape to Victory, the 81 film um, showing the Allied prisoners playing the match against the German prisoners. Uh, which England World Cup winner was featured in it? And I'm looking for this one to, uh, is Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore, captain of England 66. And for all you West Ham fans out there, um, he played for them from 1958 to 1974, gaining a whopping 544 um, appearances. Moving, I believe, afterwards to Fulham, where obviously it wasn't quite the same. So Bobby Moore for number eight. Number nine. The 2005 film Munich by Steven Spielberg follows the events of the 1972 Olympic Games which shook the world. What, what was that event? Um, and it was the terrorist organisation that killed 11 Israeli athletes. So terrible situation that it was at Munich, um, those Olympic Games. And stars of Munich, we had Mark Spitz who won seven gold medals in swimming. Seven golds and seven world records. Astonishing. And, of course, the gymnast, the Soviet gymnast, Olga Korbut. Olga Korbut, they were probably the two main names people remember from Munich 
1972. But the answer was a ter terrorist organisation that killed 11 of the Israeli athletes. So n <clears throat> number 10, the 1998 American film Without Limits follows the story of which American record-breaking distance runner? Bit of a tougher one this, and the answer we're looking for is Steve Prefontaine. Steve Prefontaine. Um, Steve was uh, a record holder, an American record holder, from every distance from 2,000 to 10,000 metres, setting his American records. He tragically died at 24 in a car accident near his home in Oregon. Um, and there's a key track meeting in the world even now called the Prefontaine Classic, held annually in Steve's honour. So, tragic film. Um, he died way too young, um, full of talent. Uh, he did make the 1972 Munich Games where he finished fourth in the 5,000 metres. So that's Steve Prefontaine. <clears throat> so very well done if you got that one right. So number 11, back to the um, motor racing. <clears throat> Weekend of a Champion is a documentary film capturing the efforts of which Formula One racing driver as he attempted to win the Monaco Grand Prix? So if, I, if I'd given you the year of this documentary, 1971, that might have helped you to guess that it was Jackie Stewart. It was Jackie Stewart. It was filmed by Roman Polensky, Jackie, one of Jackie's uh, close friends, and it shadows him throughout the whole weekend of racing. Uh, Jackie went on to gain an OBE. He won three Formula One championships, 1969, 1971, 1973. And, uh, and yes, he did win the Monaco Grand Prix in 1971. He got pole position, he had the fastest lap, and of course, he finished first. So that's Jackie Stewart. In an age, I guess people could say, it was a tougher sport. It was definitely a lot more dangerous. Um, so Jackie Stewart for number 11. Number 12, interesting one this. The film Miracle follows a national team's pursuit for victory in the ice hockey competition at the Winter Olympics. The victory being called a miracle on ice. What team was this? And the team, of course, was the United States of America, beating the much favoured, fancied Soviet Union ice hockey team, which were, it was almost like a guarantee. That's how they probably felt it. Um, it was at the 1980 Winter Olympics, which were held at Lake Placid, New York. Um, what else can we tell you about that? And of course, that's the year we had a famous gold medalist, Robin Cousins, at, at Lake Placid. Do you remember him? The figure skater, Robin Cousins, won gold that year as well. So the answer to that was the United States. Number 13, Ford versus Ferrari is a film telling the story of an American car designer, a British racing driver, coming together to build a car for Ford. Their aim to compete against Ferrari in what race? And the race was the 24 Hours of Le Mans in France and the year 1966. So the 24 Hours of Le Mans, it was the 34th Grand Prix of Endurance and it took place on the 18th and 19th of June, 66. It was the, ho the first overall win at Le Mans for the Ford GT40, as well as the first overall win for an American constructor. So well done if you got that. It was the 24 hours of Le Mans um, in 1966. Number 14, penultimate question. Cool Runnings, that iconic film that we all love to watch around Christmas, follows the Jamaican bobsleigh team um, competing at which Olympic Games? Bit tougher, this one. If I told you the year of the film, 1993, could have given you a clue. It was at the 1988 Calgary Games in Alberta, Canada. So well done if you got that one. The 1988 Games at Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, it was also the last film of John Candy. So the late John Candy, great actor. Uh, it was his last film. He died way too young. 
Um, what else can we say? And of course, 1988 was the year when we had Eddie the Eagle finishing in famous last position, but showing that the Olympics is all about taking part. So 1988, Calgary, Canada for number 14. And that leaves us for the last question, number 15, back to boxing. And quite an intriguing question, this. Feeling inspired after watching a heavyweight boxing match, a young Sylvester Stallone wrote a script for a film. It later became Rocky. Who were the boxers he watched that day? Well, it was a boxing match in 1975, Muhammad Ali versus Chuck Wepner. Chuck Wepner. And uh, it was quite a heroic match. Ali had been, um, well, Wepner was trying to win the boxing crown. And he nearly succeeded in going a full 15 rounds with the world champion, which was unheard of. Um, Ali knocked Wepner down with just 19 seconds left in the 15th round. That's some going to have gone almost 15 rounds. Um, so... For many years afterwards, Sylvester Stallone um, denied that it was anything to do with um, his Rocky films. But in later years, he has admitted that that was the fight that led him to model his Rocky films on Chuck. It wasn't quite the same, but obviously in his Rocky films, it didn't quite go the same way. But the Chuck Wepner Ali fight was his inspiration. So number 15 was the 1975 title fight between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wepner that Ali did win with just 19 seconds left when he knocked Wepner down just short. However, Ali would have won it because he was hugely ahead in the points. Um, so that's number 15. So I hope you've enjoyed this little journey through the films. I hope it's inspired you maybe to um, watch some of these again and to revisit them. And it's brought some nostalgic memories back. Like I was mentioning earlier, there's quite a lot of recent films there, such as The Keeper, uh, The Race, Jesse Owens. That's a very recent film. And, uh, and to go back to some of these old ones as well, obviously Rocky films, Cool Runnings, um, Without Limits, great films. So hope you've enjoyed that. And till next time, bye-bye for now.